An amnesiac is kidnapped by a man desperate to make her fall in love with him. He tells her who she is, but the woman doubts his stories. Unaware that the truth might be harder to believe, a woman wakes up in a nondescript room with her legs wounded, preventing her from standing. She has no memories, leaving her confused about her surroundings. A man then approaches her and introduces himself as Thomas. He openly admits that he kidnapped her and will keep her until she falls in love with him. Knowing that her memories are lost, he tells her that she's Ruby. Looking at her legs, Ruby tearfully asks what he did to her. Aunt Thomas reveals that he severed her ligaments to keep her from escaping. He tells her not to fidget and move if she wants them to heal. He then shows where her bag is, assuring her that he didn't look through her belongings. He's also left her medicine and promises to provide for and care for her through her daily needs. As she listens to this, Ruby can only cry. On his way out, the man also warns her that they're 10 miles from the nearest household, so escaping will be futile. The woman then asks if he touched her, and Thomas says no before leaving. Once alone, the captive checks the bracelet around her wrist which has Ruby X engraved. Moments later, Thomas returns and finds that Ruby has finished her meal but didn't drink her medicine. He encourages her to take them, but the woman refuses. He then takes the tray of food and medicine away, but his captive demands to know why he captured her. The man ignores her and leaves despite her screams. That evening, Ruby finally takes her medicine but falls asleep because of them. Thomas merely positions her to let her rest more comfortably. In the morning, the woman hasn't awakened when he brings her breakfast, so her captor positions her upright and taps on the wall to wake her up before leaving. Later, Ruby drags herself across the room to check her bag for clues or weapons. Inside, she finds her ID seemingly confirming her identity. She then hears Thomas arriving, so she places the bag back but drops a tennis ball from inside. Still, she drags herself back to her original position then pockets the ball to hide it. Thomas arrives to deliver her lunch, but he notices that she's flushed and exhausted. Thinking that this is because of pain, he makes her drink more painkillers before he leaves. When she falls asleep later, she dreams about being in the water. The following day, Ruby's memory is lost again, so Thomas reintroduces himself and explains her situation, including how he damaged her legs to prevent her from escaping. When Ruby asks if he touched her again, Thomas angrily shoves her bag next to the door before leaving, not answering her question. Once alone, Ruby notices the tennis ball in her pocket and the bracelet, confusing her. Later, Thomas helps his captive exercise her legs to encourage healing, then gives her a sponge bath. At night, Ruby plays with the ball to pass the time. The next day, Ruby checks her bandaged skull but no notices no blood in her hair. She fetches the mirror from her bag to see if she's really wounded, but it's no use, so she breaks the mirror to get a shard to position behind her ear, allowing her a better view. Despite her efforts, she can't see any wounds. Unbeknownst to her, Thomas is watching her through the cracks in the door. He then blows his nose, purposefully warning the woman that he's nearby, so she hides the shard in her leg's bandages then returns to her position. When he enters her room, Thomas gives her medicine to make her sleep again. Once she's asleep, the man turns the lights off and plays a recording of himself explaining Ruby's injury, adding that the idea of moving already causes pain. He then cleans the room and sleeps on the chair by the door. He wakes up to an alarm the next day, turns off the recording, and positions Ruby to sit against a wall. Thomas then turns the lights off and on, and the sound wakes her up. Her captor starts giving her the same spiel like on the first day as Ruby's memories are lost again. Over the next two days, Ruby repeats her actions, including finding the ball and tucking away the mirror shard. After these, a new day passes, and she loosens the pipes under the sink, leading Thomas to check on it. As he does, Ruby asks what will happen if she falls in love with him. When he doesn't answer, she points out that his way of attracting her isn't romantic at all. The man ignores this and asks what she wants, noting that she seems to be getting better but bored. The woman asks for a pillow, a blanket, and a book to pass the time. Thomas promises to get them for her, then asks what she thinks of the drawings he made on the walls, which are images of a brain and a tilted chair. Ruby says they're okay, smiling. This makes the man comment that she seems to be getting better. Soon, Ruby has a mattress, a pillow, 
pillow and a blanket. Thomas also gives her a book, and while she's flipping through the pages, she recalls reading the book before. Her captor reveals that it's her favorite. Despite this, Ruby starts to cry, sharing that the book is the only vivid memory she actually recalls. Thomas explains that the book is linked to a strong emotion, so it triggers a lost memory. He adds that any memory connected to a strong feeling can be restored with the right trigger. This gives Ruby hope that she can recover her memories, and Thomas promises to help her. Soon he brings her a new tray of food and even offers to get her any hot drink that she likes. Excited, Ruby asks for a red bush tea, and Thomas fetches it for her in seconds. Having prepared it already, smelling it triggers another memory in Ruby, and she realizes that the man knew she'd ask for this drink. Thomas notes that it's the only thing she drinks, but the woman wonders how he knows this. The man just explains that he'd done his research. When she is alone later, Ruby reads her book but notices that the back page is ripped, showing scribbles drawn on the other side of the cover. The scribbles look meaningless, but Ruby gets the idea to use the mirror shard to reflect the symbols. This reveals the secret message. Don't trust him. Suddenly, Thomas arrives to bring in a table, so Ruby hides the scribbles. The table allows the two to have dinner together, but Thomas notices that his captive is distracted. Ruby admits that she's just thinking about the book since the ending was surprising. The man is surprised that she finished it already, then moves to touch her hand, but the woman pulls away. Finally, she asks if there were other women he kidnapped. The man hesitates, so Ruby asserts that she's probably not special and there have been dozens before her. This makes her assume that he just wants anyone to fall in love with him. This triggers Thomas' anger, so he slams the table to make Ruby stop, wounding his hand from a broken plate. He then apologizes for his behavior but stresses that her ideas are ridiculous. The woman touches his hand then excuses that she doesn't like the idea that he'd done all this for someone else because it should be special. With that, Thomas assures her that there's no one else. The man leaves quietly, not knowing that the woman licks off his blood from her finger as she has successfully triggered some something in him. The next day continues normally, though when the man leaves her, Ruby gets an idea. She removes the bandages from her leg and searches for a scar to indicate where he cut her ligaments. However, she confirms that there's nothing, so her legs aren't damaged at all. With this in mind, she forces herself to walk and heads for the door but finds it locked. The action triggers a new memory as she sees a vision of herself by the same door as Thomas injects her with something. Ruby collapses upon seeing this memory wondering what the man had done to her. Hoping to find more answers, she uses the mirror again to check the book for clues. When she brushes a finger against the scribbles, she notices that they're drawn with powder. The scent has her recalling when she hid something behind a loose brick, so Ruby puts away the mattress and finds it. Behind the loose brick, she discovers countless burnt matchsticks, which were used to write the scribbles on the book. With this in mind, Ruby later asks to light a candle during dinner to make their meal more romantic. While Thomas fetches as a candle, Ruby empties her glass of water. After lighting a candle for their table, Thomas suggests forgetting about their argument yesterday and starting fresh. Ruby agrees, claiming that she was only overthinking. She notes that being in such a blank space drives her mad, so Thomas promises to get her another book. The woman then starts sharing about her dream where she is underwater, all while she slowly moves her hand to take the burnt matchstick from the table. Thomas comments that her dream sounds like a nightmare, but Ruby thinks it felt peaceful since someone was about to save her. However, she wakes up before she gets rescued. With her hand inches from the matchstick, Thomas holds her, noting that they're making progress. The woman smiles but pretends to start coughing as she pulls her hand away. Since her glass is empty, the man gives her his drink instead, not noticing the woman putting something away from her hand. With a new matchstick and book, Ruby creates new notes in case her memory fades again. She also starts exercising at night but still pretends to be unable to walk when Thomas is around. One night, Thomas wears a dress shirt as he serves their dinner, explaining that they're having a special meal tonight. The woman tastes the dish and recalls having the same meal in a restaurant with Thomas. That night, the couple was joking around about the food, indicating their closeness. Thomas then gave her a necklace and kissed her head, making the woman happy. In the present, Ruby is happy to recall that night vividly. She now remembers that they used to be a couple, and Thomas explains that the night at the restaurant was their anniversary. Late that night, Night, Ruby brushes her teeth and notices the initials R-A-W on the drawings, revealing that they were her works, not Thomas. In the morning, she reaches the only window in the room and sees her captor rowing a boat and the lake outside. She continues pretending to be oblivious throughout the day as she comments about her favorite book. 
Thomas recounts that he was jealous of that book since she couldn't separate from it. Soon, he provides the woman with art materials, letting her fill her blank room with pictures. He even lets his guard down enough to fall asleep on her mattress. Seeing this, Ruby wonders about escaping. Quietly, she heads to the door, but Thomas wakes up, so she pretends to fetch the tennis ball beside it instead. That night as Ruby sleeps, Thomas puts a blanket over her and pulls her hair out of her face. The gesture triggers a memory of when he was on top of her while she was passed out. One morning, Thomas plays music for them to dance to. The woman plays along as she recalls dancing to the same song during a school event. That evening was when Thomas first confessed his feelings for Ruby, who'd been his childhood friend. He acknowledged that they were about to part ways since they would attend different universities, but the man still wished to spend the rest of his life with her. Happy, Ruby returned his feelings. So they had their first kiss. The memory overwhelms the woman in the present. Seeing her memories returning, the man starts trusting her further. He lets her use the remote control for her room, so she plays an alluring music while dancing for him. This leads to the two sharing a kiss, but the woman starts crying. Concerned, Thomas stops the music and comforts her. Ruby then asks how they ended up this way. So the man recounts the night that changed their lives. He was supposed to visit her at her university but missed the last train. Ruby waited for him at the bar with her flatmate Nick, but she got drunk with a man. Thomas tried calling her, but she didn't answer him. So he asked his friend Rob to drive him to her place. Unbeknownst to him, Nick used the opportunity to force himself on the woman, hitting her to render her unconscious to do as he pleased. When Thomas arrived, he found the two in bed together. Immediately, he beat Nick up but accidentally killed him in the process. He then noticed that Ruby was unconscious, so he carried her back to Rob's car. Rob panicked that his friend dragged him into this mess but still helped Thomas take his girlfriend back to his home. When Ruby woke up, however, she had lost her memory and panicked. Thomas sedated her while Rob called an ambulance, but his friend stopped him. Thomas blamed himself for what happened, so he wanted to fix things on his own. With that, he convinced Rob to take them far away, promising his friend that he wouldn't be involved further afterward. Thomas took boats with an unconscious Ruby and threw her phone away to keep anyone from finding them. Soon he found an abandoned farm on a remote island where he discovered the hidden basement. He started to keep Ruby there, but she still couldn't remember him no matter how many times he tried to remind her who he was. The woman resisted him, so he started building the place up to lock her inside while keeping her comfortable. Thomas then did his research on retrograde amnesia, learning that Ruby lost her memory when Nick hit her and struggled to form new memories. She ended up losing her memories every time she slept for too long. Despite showing her their photos together, Ruby refused to trust him, so he kept trying other methods of triggering her memories. Soon, he discovered a way to control her sleeping cycle to ensure that her memories don't get wiped repeatedly. He tested many methods to heal her, like teaching her how the brain works, though she mispronounces hippocampus as hippopotamus. He even pretended to be a detective interrogating her about the attack and a doctor doing a sleep study on her. During these times, he slowly reconstructed the basement for her. Eventually, he discovered that providing her with a blank room as her canvas would help him control when certain memories will be triggered. With this, he painted himself as a villain, and now he can see that it worked. As they embrace, Thomas declares his love for her again, and Ruby returns his feelings. With their relationship repaired, the two become intimate again. Ruby wakes up first in the morning and kisses her boyfriend on the cheek. Just then, the alarm on his watch blares, and she turns it off. However, this triggers her memories to reset again. Finding the mirror shard under her mattress, she stabs her captor and attempts to escape. The reset makes her forget that her legs work, so she crawls to the door while the bleeding Thomas grabs her. She kicks him off and finally crawls up the stairs. She forces herself up and heads for the door, seeing that she's been in an abandoned house on a remote island. Finding a rowboat, she pushes it into the water but faints. Ruby wakes up in a hospital, and a masked nurse approaches her, assuring her that her operation was successful. Her injuries caused short-term memory loss, but he promises that she'll start recovering her memories soon. The nurse is then revealed to be Thomas, who survived her attack. He'd saved her from the water, much like all the times the woman tried to escape but fainted as he conditioned her to do so. These events were what Ruby thought were her dreams. Now, the man tries a new method to get Ruby to fall in love with him, still desperate to spend the rest of his life with his beloved. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.